All right, everybody, welcome back to the Open Road Podcast. Um, been gone for a little bit. We had some things we had to do as a, as a family and things that I had to personally do, so I apologize for not posting a couple of the podcasts last week, but we're back this week, and today's guest is none other than my cousin, Marcos Gonzalez. How you doing, bro? Good, bro. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, man, thanks for coming, dude. Uh, so, um, we just saw each other all weekend, pretty much. Yeah. And uh, into Tuesday. Um yeah. So for those that don't, okay, first, we'll, yeah, I was about to say, we we'll get you, the phones uh, locked in before we actually get into this conversation because um, yeah, yeah. you know how we do it here at Open Road. Not even on vibrate. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, we uh, we're at Aldo's uh, funeral, bro. Yeah. Um, crazy. Yeah, Just, it was, man. Yeah. Um, wow, man. Like it, it was. I mean, I knew he was sick and everything, and everything just happened so fast. And ah, that was that was hard, man. That was that was tough this uh, these past couple of days. And I, I feel like I've reflected a lot, uh, especially on the drive back, you know. Yeah. And you know, I went alone, so I had some good time to kind of just think. And it's like, damn, we we really gotta, like, in all those words, right? Be present for each other, right? So, for sure. Yeah. I, you know, not sure what your thoughts are on it, but. You know, I'm I'm gonna give my little piece real quick and just yeah, get right. it out the way. Yeah, go for it. Um, especially watching the kids, Letty. You know, like, wow. You know, I, that was uh, to me. I I don't even know the word. I don't know if it's impressive. I don't know if it's. I don't know what to say, but like that resilience, that woman, that that uh, that that's like, man. I, I I don't even know how to like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, kind of like I I think I see it like in, I would say. Oh man. Just just knowing the 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 faith that they have and and how much they they're there for each other as right. an overall as a family is just like how you said i don't know if to call it impressive but it's like it's like wow right 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 you're taken back yeah like, it is. i don't know the word no, I, like, you know maybe we'll find it later on tonight but yeah um i think that's a great example of what a family should be agree for sure you know like those you know the kids are strong mom's like you know, I'm I'm sure it's hurting her like anybody like anybody else we would, right? But yeah. man, like just seeing her like that's gotta like just my respects, man. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't even know how else to put it, man. Like Understood. it's just so powerful, you know. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean it's it's hard it's a hard part of, of life. It's it's a part of life for yeah. sure, but it's hard. But at the same time, you know, moving forward is just what we experience with the family at that point, it's not, it's just the beginning, you know. Right. You you gotta you know, the memories that come out after that and everything else is just something that it's like you said the unity of the family itself and and, and I, it's sad to say but sometimes where we all say hey a funeral is pretty much like a family reunion we need to kind of see how how you said being able to get closer to each other and being there for each other so we don't see each other just for funerals you know right for right sure. yeah we gotta we gotta we gotta, we gotta do better we will. and everybody's families and those that are not in our family per se like do better with your families right like yeah. it's, it's what it's all about yeah yeah um you know, I just had to share my piece on the funeral, you know, and, uh, yeah. you know, we're going to go into how I know you. You're my cousin. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're my cousin, too. Right, right, right. So you got me my first job, actually. Yeah, actually, <laughs> I did, yo. Yeah. <laughs> Which was a fun-ass job. Yeah, Sorry, was... I don't know if I'm going to do some bad words, but yeah, it was, no, it's it was pretty It was pretty intense. Yeah, right? it, was, uh, it was a good time, man. Like, uh, So we worked at Walgreens. Yep. Uh, we can't name what store, but those, if you know, you know, right? 3,900, I can't say exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 3,900 Beverly, but yeah, right. somewhere around there. So good, uh... I, good experience for me, right? So I remember I wanted to work, and I was like, hey, dude, like, because everybody told me, oh, man, like, don't do fast food, don't do this. Yeah, don't do Jack in the Box. Yeah, right, don't the, do none of that. Yeah. And so I was like, man, well, you know, who knows? So, like, I remember you're like, hey, man, like, Walgreens, we're good, man. Like, yeah. it's fun. I said, yeah, let's do it, man. Yeah. So I got hired. I was 15. I wasn't even 16 yet. You're not supposed to say that, but yeah, <laughs> we got you in. No, no, no. So, like, I didn't. my first day at work was the day I turned 16. Yeah, I remember. I, was, I was, remember you applied and everything else, yeah. and we're like, we can't get you started till you turn 16. Mm -hmm. So, like, like happy birthday. Let's go back and go stock some fucking right. uh, some crates or whatever. No, I, I, I really did like that job. It was, uh, it was awesome. Uh, I felt good, good experiences for sure. Right. In our childhood, like, you know, like anything else, man, like, you know, you're growing up with your brother. You know, yep. people that are closer to you as far as, like, neighborhood, like, like let's say Dimas Juan, right? So you're seeing immediate, you know, I'm on in Garden Villas. So, you know, we meet up from time to time. But, you know, we started getting a lot, got a lot more cool once we started working at Walgreens. For sure. And uh, I don't forget it, man. Like, it was it was a good time. And then, 
you know, I feel like that's when we started to bond as as family as us. Yeah. And uh, man, we we've had some fucking good times, dude. No, we've had some great times, man. We've been we've been through a lot of stuff together, and which yeah. is like, you start thinking about it, and you reminisce now, like mm-hmm. now that we're a little bit older. I guess I guess when we're like, you know, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, at that age, we're like in chinga way, like boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. But now you can step back as an adult. We're like. Did we actually do that, bro? Like, right. you know, like, damn. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. Like, why am I still fucking alive? Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's some stupid shit, but uh, I, th- I want to say the most, one of the most memorable memories to me was in Arcabuz. And I remember being just, I'd been drinking early, like early that day. I was, oh, yeah. I was wasted. Man. I think I remember the day you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I remember I'm sleeping and then, ah, man, I'm like, it's already like maybe what? 3 p.m., maybe 2 p.m. Yeah. I think you just got the or whatever. And, like, I'm there. I'm laid out. And you're like, what's wrong with you, man? Like, I'm drunk as fuck, man. Like, I, I overdid it, you know? Yeah. You're like, all right, two hours, I'm, I'm going to go get you some food. You know, like, just just stay put. Don't move. Yep. I'm going to get you some hamburger or whatever. You know, like, get you eating. Yeah. And then we'll get you back up, man. Like, yeah, man. Like, I got back up. And, man, like. And we partied some more after that. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> Went to jail that night. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> but yeah, that's a different uh, That's story. a different podcast. Yeah, We're going to talk about story. that. I'm talking about the days I got locked up. Um, but yeah, you know, good. Uh, I don't know, man. And then that kind of led into the whole deployment stuff. Yeah. And uh, it was real because, like, I got to miss a lot of the things that you guys were doing as, as, as cousins, right? And I just, I left, man. Like, there was no, no way around it. You understood. Know. I mean, you did what you did for the country, which you know you've always, you know me, bro. Right. I've but, always appreciated you and everything. Right. Else. And, and it, you know, people get that misconception, right? Oh, you did it for the country in a way, but in a way, but you did it for yourself. It was yeah, exactly. Like yeah. I think I think the main thing was I needed to see who I was. Correct. And I was like, like, I know people get the misconception. Oh man, like he's doing it for. His, in, in a way, you are. Understood. Yeah. But it's more for yourself. Like, yeah. And then when you're there and you meet these awesome like friends and like you guys are training and like. Then you start doing it just like for the guy that they're next to me. Like, I just want to, like, everybody just wants to come back. That's yeah. it. But, and you guys would send a bunch of fucking care packages, and I yeah. appreciate that. that. That was awesome. Actually, dude. I still have some of the letters that you sent over. It was like, all right, you had a list. So we would make sure, like, <laughs> we would get here and be like, all right, dude, I need X, Y, Z. And there was some other stuff that we added on just to, to yeah. make it entertaining. Yeah. But, it, but it was a, it was intense. But I think yeah. it was like, that was like knowing that we got a letter from you and saying, like, oh, dude. And then we would get together. It was like Chachis, Javi, us, Dimas, all the primos were like, all right, bro, we got a list. And we mm-hmm. got like two days to get all this shit. And yeah. I was like, boom, boom, boom. You're going to go get this. You're going to go get that. Uh-huh. Someone to get a circular saw, make it happen, and boom, <laughs> put it in the box and haul ass. Oh, that was. And then like, and then like a month or two later, you're like, what the heck did you send me, man? <laughs> <laughs> it was good times, dude. Yeah, uh, it was. Even the porn magazines that were sent, you know? Like, yeah. yeah. So we were gold out. There, I didn't. I, actually, I never bought them. I, I sent somebody else to go buy them. Gotcha, you know? gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> they were new. Disclaimer, by the, they were, baby. Hey, they, were, they were new, by the way. They were not used or anything <laughs> <Yeah>. else. <laughs> I think my brother also sent a package with like, there was like fifty magazines. Oh damn! Damn, dude. I mean, I so want to send you one or two. That right. was on the list, but it wasn't like right. fifty. Right. So like, and I'm getting them out there, and everybody's like, "What do you got?" I'm fucking. <laughs> <laughs> just, like pan caliente. Yeah, dude, those motherfuckers are going hot. <laughs> And, uh, but good stuff, man. I mean, that military life, uh, it, ma- it makes you like, not give a fuck, right? Like, yeah. it, 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 you know, all the little like, oh, no, I didn't, I don't do that. You know, nah, yeah. not in the military life. Like, people don't give a fuck in there, man. And I yeah. think that, that's like, it helped me become who I am today. Just not giving a fuck. Like, yeah. like oh, yeah, yeah, you got this going. It doesn't matter anymore. Like, you're free to just be yourself. Yeah. <clears throat> and I feel like my time now is getting kind of you guys in the same, like, you know what? Like, fuck it, man. This is life, you yeah. know? Like, like let's talk about these topics, you know? Like, let's go into things that fucking matter, not just like, oh, you know, like fucking beating around the bush. Like, I think it's bullshit. It is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. Like, I, you know, it is. some things can't happen, some things do, right? Yeah. So let's fucking, let's be real about it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I see a lot more of it now, and I think it's fucking awesome. Like, I see more families are, like, kind of just pop, 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 like, just talking, dude, and I think that's it's funny. reality, man. Yeah, and 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 what the like I guess when we grew up now, like at that time and where we're at now, it's totally different. Oh hell yeah! You know, with social media and all this other BS. I mean, it's just it's whole different area. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. so one thing I did see as well that I do reminisce, reminisce a lot is whenever you left on the service. So I was already working in construction, and I was working with your dad at Asmo, mm-hmm. and I remember we would like sit down at lunch break, and he would have a letter like your dad would have a letter. 
and be like, hey, let's write them back. Like, hey, boom, 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 boom. We'll write letters, and when he would receive them and stuff like that. That's just one thing that I just always remember. Yeah. It was so badass to have that bond, you know? Because yeah. yeah. you were gone, and your dad was there, and he's reading letters, and he's like, well, let me go. <laughs> let's write a fucking letter back. Yeah. No, let's do it, you know? And I was just like, oh, damn badass. Yeah. I, sometimes I think that those times were probably what drove my mom into some depression, you know, like, like maybe it, it just fucked with her mind so much. Right. Cause it like, must have been hard, yeah. yeah. Like I know what I'm doing, but they don't know what I'm doing. Like I feel secure and comfortable and knowing what, what I got to do and like, but yeah. they're in the unknown and you know, to them it's like everybody in Iraq is fucking going to die, you know? Like, so, you know, I, I think about that sometimes and I, I know that what I put my mom and my dad through, but I, you know, fuck, like it was a part of my life and, and, it hurts to to know that I may have helped my mom's depression with all that. Uh, I talked to my dad about that actually. Did and, you? And uh, he said he never took any pills or anything like that. Like my dad was like, "Fuck it, I ain't taking no pills." He would just go cry and like, "Fucking." It is what it is. Yeah, I'd go back and. But I think my mom, it did it really did kind of like mess her up a little bit. So, mom, I'm sorry, dude. Like, yeah, we're sorry too. Yeah, I love you, but I, I, you know, I think she's strong either way, and and maybe it was just. A test for her as well as a test for me, a test for the family. Um, I don't know who else has gone in to the Marines or anything. Um, There's been a few people, uh, like in the family, with throughout. But, I mean, you being there, what, how, eight, nine years? Yeah, eight. And eight. you were gone for five times, dude. Yeah. So it was like, that was like, like all right, he's back. <laughs> yeah. Fucking three months, four months, you're gone again. Uh, and that was just like, and that was another thing, like, whenever you would get back, that was just like, oh, yeah. that's another thing that I would fuck. remember, dude. Besides La Peda, I mean, it was a badass, <laughs> badass party. Go, fuck yeah. But it was like, you getting off, I remember you getting off the F-250, your dad's F-250, fucking rolling up, and I don't know, sometimes you're blindfolded, sometimes you weren't, and it was like, let's, let's get he as we fucking start, that yeah. was the first song, and it was just, it was just like, everybody was just fucking having a badass yeah. time. And there's a few stories after that, right, you know, some right. people got a little lit and kind of, <laughs> but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> some ice chest that kind of got went oh, missing yeah. and shit, you know. Pinche royalera. <laughs> <laughs> I love you too if you're watching yeah. it. <laughs> but that's cool, man, like, we, we talk a lot of shit to each other. Um, not in a bad way. I think it, it, we just have dark humor. We're a dark humor well, fucking yes, we do. family, you know? <laughs> yeah. And like, if somebody's fucking up, we're going to call them out. Yeah, right, man. it and is what it is. Yeah. I think it's just how we work, you know, and some people can take it. Some people can't. Yeah. So we, you know, like the people that can't, you know, we kind of just get, lower it down, yeah, we'll lower it down a little bit, you know, like, oh, that's a sensitive motherfucker. We yeah. can't do that with, but I think for the most part, we all clown each other pretty, pretty decent. But it, I think well, I think I see it where if you do clown on somebody, that means you love them, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And I think from where we're at now, because now I'm not gonna say, but I'm about to be forty. You're thirty eight. Yeah. yeah. So I think we've kind of grown up, and we kind of have that little dark humor even more now. Right. And because we know what kind of I'm not saying we know everything, but we know what life consists right. of. We've all gone through different shit. Yeah. And now we've kind of lived and kind of and see what life consists of. So then you can kind of bicker and say, "Ole wey, put el tiro," you know, yeah. like you're there, you know. Yeah. I've had a few people besides my brothers and besides my parents that have pulled me to the side and like, hey, dude, like, I see you're doing this yeah. and I think you're fucking up. Like, you know, what's up? I have some as well. Yeah. Little role models. I mean, yeah. and we'll talk about it a little bit later on. But yeah. yeah. I think it's it's important that at least we have the confidence, uh, la confianza. What do you call yep. it? In, um, I don't know how you would express that in English, but. Confianza. Confianza. Yeah, uh, yeah confianza. <laughs> <laughs> So like like I'll say one as well like like Wicho like, uh, like Wicho came from the valley which is my uncle which slash is almost like my cousin because mm -hmm. he's like almost my age or Renee's age or whatnot mm -hmm. but he came at an early age and he started working construction my first job in construction was like when I left Walgreens from like developing fucking pictures to like construction site in downtown high rise building I mean he pretty much got me in the industry in construction and kind of helped me out through it dude and then like. He was tough on me, in which mm -hmm. I was good because everybody was like, damn, he's tougher on you than everybody else. But I, I appreciate it because he built that work, that work ethic that I have right. and everything else. So at that time, I was like, God damn, babe, like, ching out. Like, because, again, I'm 18 years old, this and that. But now, like, fucking, I admire him a lot. Right, right. So, like. Love you, Wicho. Yeah, that's kind of how it goes, man. Like, the people that bring you in, mm -hmm. they work you harder because. On purpose. Yeah, because that's just, you don't get no special privileges. As a matter of fact. I'm going to fucking give you more responsibilities, give you a harder time. You know, I'm going to, you know, because they're really teaching you really yep. what they're doing. Sink or and, swim. Right. And then no one else in that place of work can be like, ah, oh, nah, he has it easy because he's, he knows the guy. Nah. Yeah. No, no. It's, it, it goes for a lot of things for mm -hmm. sure. 
like I, I felt like when I worked construction with my dad and like we did joint work with like other groups and shit. Yeah. I'm a fucker, man. No. Yeah. Like no slack. No slack. Yeah. No, you had to. And it was cool, right? Like I got to learn that side of it. Yeah. Um, so how long have you been in construction now? Dude, well, I started, if I can do math, I started when I was 18, so fresh out of high school. Because <laughs> I can't fucking I do can't no either, so, uh, <laughs> so I'm about to be 40. So I'm about 21, 22, 22 years. years roughly in the construction industry. Now, and we get this a lot, and, and we talked about this the other day. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. People say that construction workers are dumb, and I hate that, dude. Like, Some of us, not all of us. but yeah. Right, but I mean. I'm just joking. <laughs> no, but that's It a still co- takes a lot of fucking skill. Like, what I see construction as. Yeah. It's kind of like the Marine Corps grunt side of it. Yeah. Like, without us, you don't get anything done. Yeah. So, like, yeah, you can call us dumb all the fuck you want, man, yeah, but yeah. without us, nothing gets done. Yeah. So, Houston's kind of like that. Like, all these sky rises, all these fucking buildings and houses and driveways. And, I mean, fuck, you, you do it all, right? So, yeah, like, yeah. like to say that you're not smart or, or people in construction aren't smart, like, it's bullshit. I mean, you've gone to college, no? Yeah, yeah, I did. So tell me about your, so what degrees do you have? Like, how does that work? Like, Okay, so so going back to like with the concept. So everybody does have that concept. Because Arrima del pinche mic. Oh, no, vale, vale. Un, dos, tres, si, <laughs> si, si. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you good okay. too. Sorry about Just that. Just to make sure, because you can move this bitch too. So, oh, dale. so este, I started fresh out of high school. Okay. So I was at, like I say, I was at Walgreens mm-hmm. and then left Walgreens and we was like, orale, wait, you want to fucking get into construction? you know, be able to kind of build yourself up to work. So I did. So I started working for a company that was that we chose my work with. So we was a surveyor, which is kind of like a field engineer. So what okay. you do there is, and I was as an assistant. So again, day, day one green as shit, couldn't really climb up a ladder. I mean, I was scared of heights or anything else, but um, there, that individual is the individual that pretty much lays out. In other words, marks out everywhere. Everything's going to go within the building, making okay. sure the building gets, it's quality control, making sure that everything gets built correctly. Okay. So started there in high rise, a high rise in downtown. And, um, that's where I started. At, like I said, with Weichel. And then I was with him for maybe about a year, year and a half. And then I went, I think I actually want to go work for with you or your dad at, mm. at CC Hunter when oh, we were okay. over there. That's right. That's so right. I was kind of like the younger guy that was kind of somewhat translating, did daily reports and kind of work myself throughout then. And then, I went back to work with Weichel at, uh, at another company, a uh, bigger general contractor uh, here in Houston. So I was with them for about five years. And then after that, Weichel kind of went on his own way and he started working for the company where he's at now. And I kind of stayed with the company for another like two years. And then at that point, I kind of moved over to where I'm at now. And I've been with the company where I'm at 15 years. Fuck so good. yeah, dude, yeah. Yeah, 15 and a half muscle manos, which is good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's really yeah. good. So I think what kind of helped me is that I did go to school. So I started at Houston Community College, Southeast, you know, two courses, three courses in the afternoon. It's it right. more like a hangout more than anything sometimes. Right there on Woodridge? Yeah, right there on Woodridge, you, bro. You. So from Woodridge, go to Slick Willys, and then, you know, all this other <laughs> stuff. But no, no, no. But um, we started from, like I say, doing basics, classics, everything. Mm-hmm. There. I think I took longer to take my basic classes than I actually took my core classes at U of H. Wow. So... Cause I was just like, again, I was young and taking two, three courses. Yeah. I'll fall asleep sometimes. Cause we had concrete pours at three in the morning here, there, but it was what it was. So, um, going back, sorry. So going to school part-time in the afternoons, working full time, everything else. So it's good to have an education. It is hundred oh, yeah. percent. I agree. Um, when I was working, I was actually working on I-10 and Eldridge. Okay. So Worley Parson buildings, there's some high rises that are there with some parking garages. I was at the point where, of course, I still lived in the south side where I live right now. So I was driving to I-10 Eldridge in the morning and then driving. I was at U of H at that time and then driving back to U of H for a morning class because they only had it in the morning. Fuck. Go back to fucking work from like 1030 till or from noon to like five and then from there go back to U of H. So I kind of did that transition when maybe like 2005, 2006, would I? And then I was actually walking to class there at U of H. So I started, I kind of transferred, and I'm fucking everywhere, sorry. But I started at Houston Community College, and I finally transferred to University of Houston Central. And I did my degree in construction management. So what construction management, were you already kind of doing on the job training for that position? For sure, yeah, from day one. I mean, that's the biggest thing that I want to kind of explain. It's good to get the degree and everything else, Mm -hmm. but the field experience goes far away. Right. It really does. But yeah, so I was already doing... I was doing like helping out superintendents. I was already becoming a superintendent when I was still working. I mean, going to my degree itself. So ex- explain the construction field as far as like position. So labor, 
you know, how does that, how do you move up? What's the structure look like? So it all depends. So if you, if you come up itself on the field side, so going in, you start as like, you know, you can be a laborer and then from a labor, you can actually become, if you are a carpenter or a concrete finisher, there's different ranks. Throughout, I, I, I you know, ramas, right? I ramas, right? Okay. And different divisions. If you do mechanical work, like you do piping, you do steel, there's different things itself. Mm. But pretty much it goes from labor to like a craftsman. Okay. And then from craftsman itself, you can move up to be maybe quality control. So that's the person that's making sure you're doing your stuff right or not or whatnot. Gotcha. Assistant superintendent, or like you would say, like a foreman, lead man. So you're okay. kind of running a crew at that point. Mm -hmm. And then from a foreman, you become like an assistant superintendent, which is pretty much managing the owner and everything else, all the field operations and the contractors under you. Gotcha. Superintendent is like pretty much you you have pretty much the control of everything out in the field. Gotcha. And that's pretty much the field side. And everybody's like, you know, because I go to a lot of career fairs and everybody's like, the first thing they want to say is like, hey, dude, I want to become a project manager. I, I just want to sit behind a desk, which is good. There's there's so many there's so many, I guess things you can be in construction. And a lot of people don't understand that because mm -hmm. a lot of people fear, and then that's where it goes back to this. Um, a lot of people hear construction and they just say, oh, oh you, you, wear, you use a shovel every day. And it's not that case. There's so many different um, things that you can do in a construction company, in a construction industry that doesn't just consist of a, a shovel. Now, don't get me wrong. The people that are out there actually doing the work, without them, we can't do anything. Right. So that's, that's where I think from, I would say from our culture, of respect like for people that actually perform the work that goes long ways yeah of course there's man. there's people that just got to get out of you know college and they're like hey but hey you need to go tell him what to do no anyway I look on the talk to respect dude they're they're human just like all of us right and if you're out there you go out there you need to do this and that it's it's not gonna work out right so there's leadership and for sure you some of it's learned uh, some of it's taught to you like yeah. by your parents as well. I, yeah, think, yeah. I think that goes a big, a big way into like leadership and management and all that. Um, definitely agree with you there. Like, like without those people, nothing gets done. Oh man. So you got, you got to like know how to treat these guys and like motivate them. Yeah. Like you, I mean, you know, there's a lot that goes into that, it right? Is. Yeah, yeah. Like this is hard fucking work. Yeah. Like not many people fucking want to do this to begin with. And now more and more with the actual generation that we have right now, it's, it's harder. Yeah. It's a lot harder to find actual craft people that actually want to perform the work. Right. Even though even a lot of high school now is, are getting into like, you can have a welding certificate when you come out, you can come out with a safety actual program or search certificate for safety out of actually even high school yeah. and actually start early in the industry early on. But a lot of people don't want to do it. That's the biggest thing. So, uh, you know, you've been doing it for 20 plus years. Yeah. Um, Obviously, I've known you for that long or longer, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're okay. I mean, I see you. Yeah. You know, you want to go travel, you travel. You want to, you got a nice house. I've seen you remodel the fucking shit out of it. It's yeah. nice. And Solovino, yeah. Solovino's yeah. is back there. Like, I mean. Which we got to make a podcast in Solovino for sure. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, there's money in that industry. There, well, there's money in every industry. Correct, for sure. Like, go fucking chase it, right? Like, yeah. And I think people have that misconception like, oh, construction workers make $10 an hour. Like, get the fuck out of here, man. Like, no. like, it doesn't just start. I mean, you may start there, right? Yeah, like yeah, like anything sure. else, but. I did. I mean, right. I think I was, like, really happy when I first started as a, maybe, like, like a labor. And I was making, like, 12 bucks an hour. And that was, fuck. like, dude, it was, like, dude, I was, I was banking. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I mean, you're yeah, like, yeah. I, was, I was very happy whatsoever, whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And then. I mean, it right, is because we went from Walgreens to making like six bucks an hour. Six fifty, bro. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think no, I, I don't remember what it was, but it was. I was making five, five twenty-five. Is what I started at. Really? Yeah. Damn. Or if yeah, it was like it was not six bucks. You weren't supposed to start at five twenty-five. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe five seventy-five. I know. Probably it was, somewhere around there. That's, what, it wasn't six dollars. Nah, nah. And I mean, so like when I got my first like Marine Corps, I was like, <gasps> getting getting six hundred ninety-two dollars every two weeks. Like, come on, that's, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, but that would, nowadays, I'd fucking die if I made that yeah, much. Like, it's fucking insane, you know? No, and, and it is a good industry to be in, honestly. Yeah. There, it's, it's, and I'll go back to that story I was telling a little bit earlier. So I started in the commercial side of construction, and when the market would go up and down and whatnot, so the company I worked for that I've been with for 15 years had a commercial division. They also have a water, wastewater side. So that's that we construct water purification plants and wastewater plants. So a lot of people don't know about that industry too much, but... Every time you open a faucet or every time you flush a toilet, we have some communications with that. Right. Yeah, a lot of people say, ah, it's a boo-boo plan, it's a shit plan, everything else, but... It's money. It's money. That's what it smells like. <laughs> it smells it like smells money. Good. It smells like money, baby. I used to work, but, yeah. I used to work with Roque at the refineries. Now you smell all that bullshit. Yeah. 
And I, you know, I was new to the fucking thing. I was like, fuck, man, that smells like shit. Like, smell it nice and good. Yeah. I was like, fuck's wrong with this guy? He's like, look, watch me. Oh, it smells like money. Yeah, that's what it is, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah, it is. I mean, <clears throat> but it's a good industry. It's not full petrochemical. It's not in the plants whatsoever. But at the same time, it's not commercial. So right. it's a good industry, and it's a small industry here. So the local competitors, are there's not that many of us. Okay, so you got... 18, 19 year old guy right now. Yep. He likes construction. Yep. You know, he's he's already maybe worked a little bit with his old man, his uncles, like yep. building some stuff. He in his head is like, this is what I want to do. Career path, what would you suggest? Like, he's good at his hands. He likes concrete. Uh, he can tie rebar. You know, he can, he's a good, he's a carpenter. Like, the guy knows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what would be a good route for, or a good, path you would tell him to maybe follow right because there's people out there right now at that age they're like that's just, this is what i'm gonna do yeah but how do i make money in this industry so yeah what would you what would you say i would say the biggest thing overall is number one is the sky's the limit you can you can lead the destiny as much as you can but you got to have that work ethic because that's something that a lot of people don't don't actually put that as a priority uh. so work at the work ethic is one is work ethic is one so we kind of do the same thing. So several years back, and we've done it before, is there's an ag mechanic like in high schools in the FFA and all that. Mm -hmm. So in the rodeo, at the Houston rodeo, there's a there's an ag mechanic uh, committee. And these kids come in there, and honestly, some of these kids that we interview them. So we interview them because they have to score based off of their percentage. So these guys build welding rigs, trailers. They do all this as part of their FFA, but a portion of the score is also – you know, we go in there as different contractors and we interview these individuals and we score them. Man, some of these kids that are like 16, 17 years old are like on point, dude. And that's what we say, like, hey, if you don't if you want to go to college, all about it. If you want us to kind of mold you to how you said to get a mentor, put them on a mentor program oh, to say, hey, bro, okay. what are they? You get you get mentored by our quality control, by our safety department, by this, this and that. And there's different steps because we do our internship program. There's like five different ways. One week on this kind of surveyors, one week you're with quality, this and that. But you kind of mentor with them with that and then also with the superintendent. Oh, okay. And a lot of people say, hey, man, I don't want to be a superintendent. I don't want to be out in the field or anything else. But superintendent makes as much money as project managers are in the field as well. Mm. That's kind of a bond. And that's always been one thing in construction where like, oh, I'm a project manager. I'm the one in charge of everything. I'm in charge of this and that. And the superintendent as well. They, they need to work equal. And, and we always do work equal. So there's a project manager was in the office construction manager that kind of deals with the days on and everything else and the superintendent if you don't have a team you're jacked uh -huh. because there's a lot of times that there's people that come back and say hey i'm a project manager but they don't even talk to the superintendent so you can be saying all this and making up your finances and oh we're doing great but what's out in the field not working out it's it's a whole different thing gotcha excuse me so sorry going back to it i would say get on a mentor program to kind of see have have a how guess have a role model and have steps how to get to that goal and how you can because gotcha. there is because i actually there was a kid that we we hired when he was like i think like 18 19 okay we're gonna um the camera's gone okay did okay. you switch it back to me we're gonna go to a quick commercial um this episode is actually brought to you by sony cameras the ev1s yep ain't worth a fuck <laughs> <laughs> i don't know what it is or oh, why that it one turned it. off yeah. and uh are we doing all right so far? Yeah, we're good. Uh, we're back. Yeah, we'll be back. Um, okay. Sorry, I'm going to cut you off. Okay. Um, we're just having technical it, no, that's good. difficulties up in this motherfucker right Am here. Am I doing good so far? Uh, not really. Not really, dude. I kind of okay. I kind of want to just like kick you out. Nah, fuck it. With you. <laughs> At least you're honest. Are but. we back or no? Oh, he's going to zoom you back in. Because okay, I, 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 I know. I, that's, that's kind of hard, fucking hard. I know. <laughs> so, like, hmm, I guess where I'm at on it is, so you, you, you can mentor these guys like that? Like, yeah. I had no idea that even fucking existed, dude. So we kind of built, we kind of established it. Ah, is that a company yeah. thing? It's kind of a, it's kind of a company thing, but we've, we've bought in, we're back on? Okay. Yeah. You get too far from this motherfucker? And like, it's okay. not good. So you can remember, you can move them up like this. Okay. Yeah, I was saying. Yeah. You, know I'm saying? you hear me? Shit. Pimp shit. One, two, three. One, two, three. One of those three. So, yeah. so you can um, mentor these guys, um, but they have to pass some type of like 
they have to check some sort of boxes right before they sure. can. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and it's not a. I wouldn't say it's it's a written format, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. it's something that we've done, and it's not what we do every single time. Ah, uh, okay. And so it's case by case by case. Case by case, for sure. Gotcha. If you see a potential in someone, then your company can be like, you can be like, hey, I see potential in this a kid. Yeah, yeah. Like I want them. You know, let's get them in. Yeah. You know, I'm willing to let's show them this, that, and the other. Um, and then how also, often does that happen, though? It doesn't happen too too often, um, but we do do a lot of internships. Gotcha. So. So the company I'm with, like I say, I've been with for 15 years. So we were a, I wouldn't say a mom and pop, but we're a smaller company before here in Texas base. About six years ago, we got bought, we got bought out by a larger company mm-hmm. that is a corporate America company. And actually their owners are from Spain. Mm-hmm. So these, this is the kind of like a worldwide company. So that acquisition was actually pretty smooth. It was a lot of good benefits, mm-hmm. but before we probably went to like three or four universities. Now I think we go up to like 50 universities. I mean, yeah, Colorado has got a mind. So they, they focus on heavy civil work, which is like road work. So they're like in all kinds of universities throughout pretty much the nation. But the good thing is that we have a good talent here in Houston and Texas. So A&M, you know, U of H, Texas Tech, we do all those as well. Instead of bringing somebody in, which, you know, we do bring people in as well, but mm-hmm. we do get local talent as well. Gotcha. They're at University of Houston. So I'm part of a, the advisory board, too. So I kind of at U of H for construction management. So we kind of bring in local talent here since we already have people that kind of live here, Tolpeo, you know? So, like, your life is fucking jam-packed with shit, bro. You it do is. construction. You got the, Rome, uh, the rodeo committee stuff. You can, well, yeah, that's my second. That's my. Uh, that's, that's your bread and butter. That's that, my bread and butter. You probably like that better than anything, right? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, kind of. You could do that full time, you would. Bro. I would. Yeah, I pretty um, much would. You're a, a grandpa? I am a grandpa. A recently <laughs> grandpa. As of a week. <laughs> My baby girl, Bailey. Uh, Bailey? Bailey had puppies. Nice. Um, How many she had? She had six, and she lost one, so she has five. Oh, damn. Nah, but, um, dude, it's been like a trip. So this is like the first dog I've had that's had puppies. Oh, wow. Maybe we did when we were little kids, and we didn't pay too much attention. Mom and dad took care of them. Yeah, but you didn't care. Yeah. Or that's otro pedo, wait. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty big. Like, wake up at 2 o'clock, and Nancy's like, hey, wait, go check on the dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's in this body, but See, it's I, mean, I, I bet it's cool though, man. Like, uh, yeah, <coughs> do y'all have names for the fucking puppies or no? No, because if we name them, we're gonna keep, keep them also, but we can't do that yet. Did y'all at least, um, did y'all put collars on them to identify the puppy itself? Not, not yet. Oh, okay. I'm gonna try to maybe do that next week. Gotcha. Since they so go, you wouldn't know which one was born to... first, second, third, or fourth anymore. Yeah, I think we do. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. so okay. so it's crazy. So they were born last Friday mm-hmm. and I was out of town, so uh, we had our annual meeting for the company. And it's in, uh, in Bastrop. So I'm there, and uh, Nancy, my wife, she's a teacher. So this, in the morning, like, Bailey's, like, huffing and puffing, and they're like, oh, dude, today's a day. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, yeah, check Google. It says everything there. Like, she's having all the symptoms. I'm like, all right. So she comes home from, uh, from school, uh, and she's already had one pup. And I'm like over there and she calls me and I'm at the annual meeting. There's like a, the guest speakers like in Chinga and she's like, hey, baby, one's out. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, do I leave? Do I, what do I do? So I like freak out, dude. I call my sister, Mary Lou, my compadre Juan. Este, I call my cuñado Daryl and my suegra. And like, so it's like a, like an event. Like she's having puppies <laughs> and she's just like popping them out and shit. Like, pop, pop, that's like, awesome. Like, yeah, no, it's like. And I'm like in there, like I'm, I'm at, the, at the guest speaker. I'm kind of looking at that kind of when we have a break, I look out like, all right, three puppies out. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So by the time that I ended up leaving, I left like around five o'clock at night. She had already had all her puppies and everything else. And she was good. But um, shout out to everybody that helped out. Merlu, Juan, Daryl, Alexis, my suegra. I heard my suegra. I had to kind of do some nice. helping out as well and whatnot. So. so do these dogs have homes yet? That you, a, few, maybe. a few, maybe. So I think I'm going to keep one. Okay. Um, since we had another dog before Shelby and we had her for 15 years, actually we got her when me and Nancy were dating. Wow. Um, so we're probably going to keep one. She passed last month. So, I mean, last month, last year. So to give company to Bailey, that'd be one. And then my mom says she might want one. Um, my neighbor said he might want one, but leave him on my side of the fence. So we're kind of still working that out. You know, (laughs) I don't know how that works out, yet, but it might work out. (laughs) Right. Um, one of my uh, Carlos said he might want one gotcha. too. So there's so, a few people. Right. So if anybody wants a puppy, yes. make sure you get with Marcos. Yes. Um, you can find him on Facebook. Yeah, Facebook, uh, um, Instagram. Instagram so much. get with Marcos if you want a puppy. Most people that fucking are watching right now probably know you anyways. Right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, like, I don't have that many fucking subscribers, right? Yeah. Like, 
Not yet, baby. We're fucking working on it. We're making it happen. That's right. And uh, open road, baby. Open um, road all the way. So, how many females? How many boys for the pups? So three, three boys, two females. Gotcha. And I don't want to, since they're 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 barely born, like about a week, and everybody's like, "Hey, how are they gonna look?" And this and that. We don't know. So there's a story behind that too. Gotcha. So, so uh, me and Nancy were at work when old girl got knocked up. Oh, so nice. we we just saw all of a sudden like her cheeches were growing, and we're like, "Hey." What happened? What happened? So it was actually the weekend of um, Lexi's quinceanera that Friday. I had a day off. So I took it to the vet and they're like, hey, you know, this is what's happening. Like, I think she's pregnant. I'm like, oh, we can do we can do blood tests. We can do this. We can do an X-ray. But the X-ray won't show that she has babies because she's still early on. I guess the pregnancy is like 60 days. So then, like, I go in and they do X-rays and all this other stuff to check her uterus to make sure that's all fine. And then all of a sudden... um, the vet comes back and he's like, hey, bro, like she can have a baby tomorrow. She's like 55 days. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, wow. whoa. So she was that far along, but she's always been really, really thin itself. Mm-hmm. So um, we, we we knew who the baby daddy was somewhat. He was right. kind of hanging out or whatever. Um, but we didn't know exactly. But when she had the puppies, they kind of looked like him as well. Gotcha. So I, I wish I would have bred, her, bred, bred her or had breeded her with another GSP. She says she's a, a GSP, a German short hair pointer. But I think the puppies might look all right. They might yeah. look good. Yeah, you know, you may not be able to make money off the puppies, but nah. that's as long as they go to good homes. Yeah, you know, that's that's fine. That's um, what matters more than anything. Yeah, maybe maybe breed her one time with a real GSP. Or, I thought about it, but I, I think I'm just gonna probably fix her. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we're supposed to fix her during during the summer since Nancy was working throughout the year, mm-hmm. and of course that takes like ten day or twelve day recovery. So we didn't do it throughout, and then boom, she got knocked up. So mm-hmm. hopefully in the summer we'll probably get her fixed. Yeah. Badass. But she's, dude, she's, she's my life. Honestly, yeah. she is. Um, we've had her for two and a half, going on three years. And I remember when I told Nancy, I was like, hey, I'm going to get another puppy. So how I got her is that a buddy of mine that's on the deer lease where I'm at has a dad. He owns a dad and his sister owns a mom. And they live down in Kingsville. And all of a sudden, he's like, hey, you want a puppy? So I kind of jumped on it. I was like, yeah. And I get home and I'm telling Nancy, I was like, hey, you want a puppy? And she's like, no. No, <laughs> we already have a fucking dog. What do you want another dog for? Oh, wow. And then to the point where we had her, and I would say maybe like four or five weeks after we've had her, I see Nancy carrying her like a damn baby and spoiled and everything else. And I'm like, dude, I love this. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and she is spoiled. She's very, she's bougie. So kind of moving into this question here. Yeah. Um, your grandpa puppies. Um, have you guys thought about having your own kids or how's that working yeah so i know it's a touchy thing right it's a little touchy Pe- yeah. people shouldn't be asking this shit but we've we've, covered we've talked it. about yeah, it yeah we talked about it a little bit so yeah i'm i'm a, I'm a grandpappy but i'm not a dad yet right. so me and nancy have been married for 10 years gotcha um <clears throat> fill me up cantinero that's that Arre. Arre. Aquí. <laughs> <laughs> cafe cafe aquí, aquí. <laughs> people will find out later yeah we'll have um, her on soon so yeah so me and nancy got married uh we dated for five years right after we got married we said hey let's take a break no kids whatsoever let's do let's enjoy ourselves and then at one point we said hey let's start trying to have kids and we did we tried and uh, we were not success, uh, successful mm-hmm. and then we did a little bit of treatments here there and then we got to a point where it was physically and mentally hurting us both wow. because we we're going through overall treatments and nobody knows about it. You know, right. you kind of keep it to yourself a little bit because every person that you talk to has a fucking opinion one. When are you having a kid? Yeah, yeah. And when are you having a kid? And, th- and that's the thing about it. When you have a kid, they're going to say, when are you having your next kid? Mm-hmm. And then when are you going to have the third kid? And when are you going to get a dog? You know, this and that. Wow. So I think, I think at that point it was rough. Yeah. It was rough to the point where I was more excited about it. Like, we're going through treatments, and I'll be with Nancy, like, hey, you're pregnant? Are you pregnant or not? And she's like, no. no. And she'll be like, no. But um, throughout the years, like I say, we're going on, or this actually next month will be 10 years that we're married on uh, June 15th. And I think maybe about three or four years ago when we stopped doing the treatments or anything else and we said let it be, um, it's, it's helped us out. I mean, the overall treatments were, were rough. It was to the point where you're, you have it in your mind. So, so it's, it's, I got it. And I hate to cut you off here, mm. but I don't want to lose a train of thought. No, you're good. You're saying you're doing treatments. Y'all are 
both doing treatments? No. So it was kind of, we went through it. You know, like, I mean, we don't have to go into this, bro. Like, I, yeah. Sponsored by <laughs> Houston <laughs> like, IVF. No, not, like, I, I don't want to. No, no, no. Like, if you're not ready to talk about this, bro. No, no, no. Like, no, no. It's, it's kind of a, like you go, you get, <laughs> you get checked and, and your wife gets checked. And then you talk to the doctor and the doctor pretty much tells you, Hey, do X procedures. Gotcha. Okay. If it's, if it's her getting shot up, me getting shot up or anything else throughout, that's one thing, but there's different procedures for every single criteria per se. Do they narrow it down? Like they do like, Hey, it's you or it's you. Yes, they do. Okay. They okay. do narrow it down to the point where it's you or you or both of you or anything else. Oh. And like I say, every criteria is different. So throughout the process we did or whatnot, I think they pretty much sat us down and said, Hey, if you guys really want to whatsoever, it can be, I think it was like 65 grand and it was like a 40% chance one shot. Oh my God. Dude. And I was, uh, I told Nancy like, she goes, oh, by the way, like we'll do this. We'll sell this. We've got savings. We'll do this. We'll make it happen. And at that point, I think I fucked up because I was like, I'm fucking ready. And I told Nancy, I'm ready right now. Let's, let's go. And she's like, I'm not like, I'm tired. She's been going through this and she's, she's, she's going through this process with her life, her family. And I mean, everything itself that's gone on throughout her life, you know? Yeah. And I'm like, we're pushing and pushing. I was like, well, maybe, maybe it's not meant to be. Right. And, um, it was, it was tough, but at the time it made us stronger. And I, and I, and I admire her because right. dude, she's a fucking badass chick. Yeah. I, it's hard, right? Cause like yeah, yeah. everybody wants that dream sometimes, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I went through my first marriage I wanted to have kids. Yeah. And then we just couldn't. Yeah. Like, I mean, I don't know if it was me. I don't know if it was her. I don't, I don't know. Like, yeah. Cause we never saw a doctor. Yeah. And I remember it fucking with me. Right. Cause like. It does. It fucks you through a little bit. Right. I, I, I remember, you know, I was a stepdad and then I remember, f and this is going to sound fucking crazy, but so I remember father's day would come around and I wasn't right. Like I wasn't a real father. Like yeah. in, in my, in my mind. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm just, like, I play the part, but I'm not really one, right? Yeah, so like, yeah. Like, it really did fuck with me a lot. And then, but I also came to the conclusion, you know, this is the way God wants it to be, man. Like, and maybe if I would have stayed in that marriage, I probably would never have had kids. I don't know. Yeah. And I'm not saying that's what drove me out of the marriage or not. Yeah. You know, it was other shit going on, but. For sure. Like, I had, I came to the conclusion, like, I'm just not going to have kids. Like, yeah. you know, and. After a while, I accepted it, and, like, I was good, you know? Like, and, and, But it, do, it does hurt, you know, like, if you really want some, yeah. and you see everybody around you having them easily. Like, everybody having parties, and you're right. not invited to Chuck E. Cheese and shit, right, even right. though they sell beer there, you know? You're coming <laughs> to my fucking party today. <laughs> I'm coming to your party. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no. no I'm with cheese. you. It, it's, it's, it's hard, but it's, it's acceptable right. with time. Right. I've accepted it a few years back. It's hard, dude. Like it most is. people can't even fucking talk about that. No, they can. It's yeah, it's, it's tough, tough, man. And it's to the point where a lot of people think, how can I say it? Like, again, people ask you, and people ask you constantly. And you mm -hmm. go to parties, pachangas, or whatever. Hey, wait, go on the way, go on the. Right, and but it, they don't know what right. so much is and behind. Right, right. But and, honest, and and it's almost like 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 we're asking, or I don't think I've ever asked you, but but I've. I don't think you have. No, I don't think I have. Like, and it's not like. I think I think I understood, right? Like, yeah, yeah. There's people that just don't like get it because like they don't get it, right? And there's people that ask you like every fucking time they see you, right? And it's to like, them every time, like the last ten years asking me, you know, right. like fuck. I say, but it, it, you know, I I could see where it hurts the person being asked, and it's like, well, sometimes I don't think the person asking means bad. No, you know? they don't. They don't mean like, bad whatsoever. And it sucks, right? Because like yeah. it because it puts you in your feelings a little bit, like fuck, like damn, like you know, like. Here I am telling them, nah, I'm waiting, you know, like, yeah, I'm waiting for the right time. And then after a while, you're like, like, bitch, fuck, I, you I know, like, a pesca <laughs> chicle, <right? laughs> you know? like I've been motherfucking married for seven years, bro. Like maybe, you know, like yeah, just yeah. fucking drop that shit, you know? Yeah. Like, so I, I can see where, and it's cool that you get to put it out now. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, there's people, I'm sure people have wondered just oh, like yeah. people wonder about everything. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. And it's not bad to wonder, like, like, I think like even like Vic Sadi, right. Like, yeah, yeah. like. People, I always wondered like the details, right? Because like yeah, yeah. you don't know. Yeah. Rebecca. Yeah. I I always wondered like man, like how does that really work? Yeah. Like and you just go <clears> through like different like people that we know and, and and you're no different than than me or anybody else. Like yeah, yeah. you have a story and you know I'm just just want to know like yeah, yeah. And I can see where it gets uncomfortable for people like it stopped being 
it stopped being uncomfortable. Like, in other words, I got accepted it, like I told you, several years back. And now people, like I say, when I was first, barely, we were barely going through treatments and everything else, and people are asking you, like, nonstop, it's like, it does affect you. Mm-hmm. And it does affect mm-hmm. you when you watch the news and everything else. So like, anyway, a kid was thrown in the dumpster. Like, anyway, was, you know, you always see these deadbeat dads and everything right. else or whatnot. And uno que quiere is, like, to the point where, like, you want to, but then at that point, it's like, I think God has his plan, how you just mentioned mm-hmm. earlier. So he's had a plan for me and Nancy. He has. Do you, you think adoption's in the, an option? Yeah, we have. We've yeah. thought about it for cool. some time. We've done, we've thought that. And I think actually Nancy's doctor said, or not before the whole deal of like trying to get treatments like in Mexico and everything else wasn't an issue, like was like a heck no, don't even go there. Mm-hmm. Now it's kind of open up. So me and Nancy just been playing it on the, you know, on the fly and see what happens. But honestly, to this point right now, it's, it's good that it hasn't happened. And I know it sounds shitty the way it is, but at the same time, it, I think me and Nancy have had a good relationship, a good marriage, and everything else out, and we've accept, have accepted not having kids. And like in other words, if I don't have kids, I'm perfectly fine. Yeah. I have a lot of God kids, God, mm-hmm. you know, God, like how does I house my nieces, nephews? Everybody has kids. Like I said, your your daughters, everybody's daughter. You know, everybody's kids itself is good. Right. But um, Nancy's helped out a lot with her family. Mm-hmm. Her dad got sick after we um, got married. Like. Two months after we got married, he had, he had cancer. And then he passed, and then I was like, hey, what up? Now, you know, try to, you know, let's grieve with your, your, with your dad, you know, with your mom. And then her mom got sick. Mm. Um, she got cancer, and she went through treatments. And it was a, it was a group effort amongst all of us. It mm. was Nancy, um, Michael Yow's family member. Mm. Everybody was there, which was good. But I would think, I think back now, and I think, like, if – if we would have had fucking three or four kids, would it would Nancy have been able to do that? Right. So it's kind of worked out. You know, right. it has. God has a plan, bro. It does. Hey, he really does, bro. Yeah. I think God I think I've good. realized that too. I yeah. think obviously you know what's happening in my life at the moment and I never thought things would just turn the way they did, you know. Yeah. But hey man, like God has a plan, dude. Like he sure does. God, man. like it's it's amazing to live this life. Like I think it's a miracle that we're even here to begin with. Um, like we got a chance to come experience this life. Uh, it's not perfect, you know, but then if it was like, what'd be the fucking point of that? Right. Exactly. Like, life like, is not easy. That's why they call it life. I feel, I feel this too. And I, and, I, and this is something that I think the more you suffer, yeah, like, like, and then somehow you get like some other type of life reward come to your life. Yep. So you could value it that much more. Yep. Right. So like if everything was always take, 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 I feel like sometimes you don't value shit, right? No, like, no, you don't. It's, because you don't know what it's like to not have. Not to say it would be selfish, but it, it's it is. right. I mean, but you, it kind of is to a certain yeah, extent. Yeah. You're you know? kind of being selfish. No, yeah. no, yeah. No, it's it's to the point where life is going to have its struggles. Right. And you're going to go through things. And, right. and, and, and nobody's perfect, like you right. said. I'm, I'm nowhere near perfect yeah. whatsoever. I'm, I'm fucking pretty close, but not, not yeah, fucking. You're getting there, you know. You're, <laughs> But this may be your, this is maybe what, what you came here to do, right? Like maybe yeah. this is what you came to figure out in, in this lifetime, maybe like, yeah, like, man, like I'm at the battle, this infertility or, or, you know, I think y'all have been dealing with a lot of cancer on Nancy's side of the family. Yeah, right? Our side too. It's been, it's been back uh, and forth, but yeah, it's been a lot like, cause Nancy's mom just, yeah. Um, so yeah. it's, it's like. You're dealing with a lot. Nancy's dealing with a lot. And if you did have kids in the mix, like, like, like you said, you that's know, that's what I'm saying, dude. I mean, maybe it'd be harder, right? Or, yeah, yeah. or maybe you guys wouldn't be able to help as much. Or that's what I'm saying. Or Nancy so. wouldn't be able to have as much freedom as she does to have and, and do things right. So, Correct. you know, I, I don't know how it all works out, but I believe, and I strongly believe there's a, just a plan that God has for us. And we just have to trust the process. You there know? is no, you have to trust the process for sure. Um, so the, going back to Nancy, like I said, Throughout, you know, whenever we got married, so she had just graduated from U of H as well with a psychology major, and she's like, all right. And then her dad got sick, and I was like, hey, take care of your dad. You know, one income, we're going to make it work. Mm-hmm. Right? We live within our means or anything else. We're humble. Like, be I ain't smart. Dri- be I ain't, smart. Yeah. yeah, you got to be smart about it. We're going to make it work. Chile chingazos, make it happen. And then it seemed like every single time that Nancy would look for work, um, something would happen. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't because of that or anything else, but... I felt that sometimes it was kind of scary for her to look for work for the same reason because mm-hmm. it seemed like, like, damn, you know what I mean? Like, 
something bad's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was scared for her because I didn't want her just to be at home, not just because machista. I'm nowhere near machista right. whatsoever. But I wanted her to be open to, to life itself. I didn't want her to just be cooped up in the house. Gotcha. So she's kind of a, like a teacher assistant. So she, she hired on this past year as a teacher assistant. And um, she helps out with kids in pre-K, kinder. And I see her face coming back with all the stories, all these kids. And she's like, dude, like full of life. Mm-hmm. Not saying that she was before, but I see her. Right. She likes it. Right. Actually, she texted me today. And she's like, hey, I, I graded my kids from when they started the semester to now. And they know so much more. And she's like, I, I, I feel so good. And I was like, I'm proud of you. I really yeah, am. Yeah. Like, badass. You know yeah. what I mean? But I think we've kind of made a decision that she might, like I said, priorities are mom. So, yeah, she found out that she got diagnosed with cancer again um, uh, last uh, week or two weeks ago. Um, but one thing about my suegra, I will say, is that woman has a shitload. Of, I can't say shitload, but she has faith mm-hmm. and she has power mm-hmm. and willpower, bro. Yeah. To me, she is one of the top women in my life. Mm. She's gone through so much and this and that. And she's a warrior. Yeah. Like a few weeks ago, like knowing that, you know, she had already done her mammogram, did all this and that. And it's like at the quinceanera. She's at the quinceanera. And she danced all night. You know, everybody like Thelma and everybody else were like, wait, tu suegra anda todo lado, baile, baile. She's like, if I have cancer, I'm going to beat it. Right. And that's the way she did it first time. And she's like, todo para adelante, right. con fe de Dios. And she has a lot of faith in God. And what she said, that, that to me is like, that's key to her, you know, yeah, yeah. and key to all of us and to the family. And that's why we've, we've all kind of stayed united, you know, more than right. anything. And, and I think that's what I'm seeing a lot, right? Like, like Aldo's family, right? Like mm-hmm. they didn't have faith, man. Like, I don't think that family will be as tight as it is. Right. Yeah. yeah. In, in this hard time. Yeah. And then, you know, with your sweat, you're seeing that. And I think maybe, maybe I lack a little faith, you know, like maybe I just need to like really get better with my faith, you know? Yeah. I, I lost faith a couple yeah. of years ago, and that was something that um, my compadre, my brother, Rene, kind of helped me out with. So Rene invited me to go to a, a retreat. It's like an all-men's retreat. Um, it's an axe retreat. Okay. I went two years ago, and, uh, dude, it helped me out so much. Yeah. Um, it's like a three-day deal, and it's crazy because like you're, you're going with a group of men. It's all men on a bus ride to wherever we're going to a retreat. Nobody's talking to nobody, bro. Bien callado, todos como, like, como si vamos para Harris County Jail, you know, todos callados y nomás. The Sunday coming back, I think these men that I met on this retreat, I, I felt a bond with people more than with people that I've known for 15, 20 plus years. And not saying that I have less bond or with right, the people. You went with, deep with them. It's Maybe? Yeah, yeah. Oh, very deep. Yeah. So it's, it's a good experience. I, and yeah, okay. It's a very good experience, and, and uh, I've told you about it. You right, want to come. Right, so, right, right, right. so it was funny because a guy that I used to work with back in the day, like 2008, 2009, he was kind of like a, a, a director or a kind of assistant director for X, and he's like, come on, bro. Yeah. And like everybody else, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody else that I ask, like now that I've gone on the retreat, like if you want to go, and, there's, and don't get me wrong, I would do the same thing. I would ghost people because it would be, be like, hey, you want to go? I got a God, bro. I, I, I got a God. Yeah, I'm good. I'm yeah, good. Yeah. The Sunday I got back, I called that guy and he, we, we worked together and I called him and I was like, dude, I'm sorry. I never went with you. I was like, I should have done this the way back when. Yeah. And the magical thing about it is that I went on my retreat and after you go on a retreat, you can also be a team member, like pretty much like sponsor and help part of the organization. This past year, the, the church that we went with on the retreat, they weren't doing it for English for men. So this guy that, you know, I've known for 20 plus years from work, um, he's in St. Mary's in Leak City, and he was also being a director, assistant director at a church, at an axe retreat. And I prayed on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. I prayed on it, and I said, you know what? They're having a retreat, and he reached out to me. He goes, hey, you guys want to be 10 members? Well, he asked me, and I told him, and I was like, hey, let's, let's pray on it, bro, and let's do it. And we did, and we were 10 members for another church, and they, they knew us as the Gonzalez brothers, you know? Yeah. Um, it, was, it was neat, man. It was, it was very good. Uh, we brought on three guys that we knew as well. Good friends that I've known for years. Some that I've known for a few, another compadre that went with me. And I think it helped all of us. It really does. And it helps them as well as me. How can someone find a retreat like this? So I guess you can look it up if you go to church or, you know, it's a Christian Catholic base or anything else. Okay. And there's some people in there that have no, no religion base whatsoever. Okay. Um, but, but you can look it up. Um, the church that we go to, now is the one that Renee goes to is St. Luke's the Evangelist. It's kind of like Beamer area. Okay. Uh, Beltway. And like I say, we did the one in Leak City, but it's, 
if you look it up, it's an overall, it's a retreat that's pretty much done throughout the world. I think, gotcha. I okay. think it's throughout the world and you can't, we can't describe too much that happens, but I just, I can say that it was, it was a great experience. And like I say, I lost a lot of faith because you, I got married 10 years ago and then you live with the, the day to day that we live now. And, the, and like I say, there's struggles, oh, for there's sure. sin, there's this and that and everything else. And, and I started, I would go to church and then I stopped going to church, stop kind of going to, and it's a battle. It's a daily, it's a daily thing. But I think what's helped me out so much is that I leave it up to him mm. and, and it's helped me out so much because you can try to conquer the world. And that was something that I did at work. Dude. Mm. I was the type that like, ain't gonna lie two o'clock in the morning, I'm, I'm writing emails back to the point where it helped me out time management. It helped me out with my marriage. It helped me out with everything. It really did. Like it sets your soul reset. It's maybe. a reset. Yeah. So now even as a team member, I still need it, dude. I still need it. Like I, I want to go back because I'm not being a retreating, but I'm at the same time, I needed to cleanse me. I, I needed to a refresher. Nice, nice. So there was a, there was a part of the retreat where I, I can, I can't share too much about it, but I felt some way. I felt some type of way. And I was like, dude, like something happened. And I was like, and you guys wear a bracelet, no? Is that what you have on? Yeah, it's a it's a resemblance of some of the bracelets. Mm -hmm. So it's like the fishermen. So in other words, bringing people in more than anything. So it's um, it was the point where I told Renee, I was like, hey, no sé si me está pegando un ataque o algo. I feel something here, and he just looks at me, and laughs. He goes, "It's the Holy Spirit." Oh. So I hadn't felt. I guess I hadn't felt the Holy Spirit, or maybe I had, and I didn't know what it was. Gotcha. Because you do, you do your, your first communion, do you do your confirmation at a younger age? Right. And again, now living through adult life and everything else, now since the retreat, there's been different occasions running within part of my life. Uh, and I'm like, I feel it. I'm like, I know what it is. I'm like, what is it? God, it's good. That's it's cool, it's man. beautiful. Yeah, man. It's powerful. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very powerful. I think uh, I, think I might, might, might be interested in that. Yeah, if you look into it, just let me know. Yeah, for sure, man. I think it's in I, September, so. Like, I'm not going to say I'm religious. Yeah. I mean, I believe there's a God for sure. For sure. Yeah. And I don't know if, if my way of thinking is like, oh, religion, you know, like, I don't know if it was created to control people. Yeah. Like, I don't know if it's been doctored or corrupted. Filtered or anything else. Right. right. So who knows? But I do know, and I, I, I know there's a God, um, I just, I don't know if it's faith, man. Like, I don't know what yeah. I've lost, you know, like, yeah. like just going through this life. I don't know. Like, I, you know, I, I need, I think I need something like yeah, that. Yeah. I think, I think like you said, life, life for sure is, it's a motherfucker. It is. It's yeah, tough. Like, like I do pray. Like I, I, I you it's know, good. it's just, I don't go to church, you know? Like, yeah. And I don't, man, maybe I'm wrong for that, you know, like, but. Honestly, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think you are. Okay. So a lot of people say, hey, you have to go to church and this and that. I mean, I'm not going to get into too much into detail of that, mm -hmm. but I feel that I, I need to hear it more than anything. I'm that type of person. I need to have some type of structure where I have to do it. On the opposite, like Nancy, Nancy's okay with going to church and we go to church together. And then if, if we don't go, she's like, I can pray anywhere I want, gotcha. and it, which is true. Mm -hmm. God's always with you. Right. So it's not like a hey, shame on you. You don't go to church. Right. You should go to church right. or anything else. And, and I, and some days I, I miss, you know, I, right. I go on and some days I don't go or anything else. And, and I do, I do feel right. bad. I even feel bad that sometimes, I, you know, you get out of the retreat and you're praying every single day. And then after a few months, you don't pray every night and then you miss a day or you miss a day here or there. And I feel bad for it, but uh, that's something I'm trying to, it's a, it's a work in progress and that's what I'm trying to do. So one thing I've, I've done lately, um, you talk to yourself? Yeah. Like in your mind? I do. Okay, good. So like, You're not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> I hear that's pretty normal, right? Yeah, so, it is. Hope like, so. I think when I think and talk to myself there, I think God hears all that. Yeah. Like, I think he's like, because we're God-like, we're creating God's image. Yeah. Like, God knows and sees all and knows all. Like, so like, I wonder if like, you have to talk, yeah. go pray, or just think it. So like, maybe, something, maybe, I don't know. something I've kind of changed as well. I'm not going to say that it's, the right way or anything else, but on my way to work, I talk to him. I talk gotcha. to him as I talk to him as he's my, he's my friend. Gotcha. So I'm I'm driving. Yeah, I'm focusing on the road and everything else. Crack but a fucking modelo. Yeah, <laughs> Michela and everything. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's too early in the morning. Yeah, the no. guy doesn't drink early. No. We don't know. We no, don't we, know. We don't know. But right. but, but I, I I I talk to him as as my friend. Mm. 
And I talked to him and say, hey, this is what's going on. Help me out with this. Help me get through this. And then it's even to the point at work, dude. Hey, this, 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 that, that. In my position, I deal with a lot of problem solving. Like, mm-hmm. it's always on the on the fucking fly. Like, hey, this is jacked up. This is messed up. We got to do this. We got to do that. We're not making da, 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 da. It's all this. Sometimes I just close my door in my office and I just take a few minutes and say, hey, man, I'm going to leave it up to you. You tell me how it is. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of, that's helped me out. So, gotcha. but like cool. I say, I talk to myself. Yeah, I kind of do, but I also talk to him and yeah. I talk to him in that matter. I might, I might try that. Yeah. Yeah. I've, Some, I, f- I feel like it, when I talk to myself that way, I feel like I'm talking to him. Maybe yeah. that's my way of like, yeah, like praying, you know, I, I don't yeah. know. It's weird, the, the, but it, everybody has their way. I think so. Yeah. yeah. So something that got after my retreat as well was that I have a daily devotional book. So every single day, there's a small scripture from somewhere in the Bible, and it kind of just describes that. So sometimes, like, you read it, and um, it's cool. Mm-hmm. Like, you read it, and then you get on throughout your day, and whatever specific is there is like, dude, that, that it's targeted right there. Mm-hmm. So that, that's my little morning deal that I try to do. You know, don't wake up, and I still do it right now. Like, get up, and the first thing you do is you're brushing your teeth, taking a shower or anything else, but you're on social media. Gotcha. And then try to try to eliminate that social media first, and have a few minutes with him and God and everything else. Gotcha. And, okay. But again, that's a struggle, dude. It's, yeah. it's, it's an everyday. That's it's good advice day. for sure, man. Yeah. I, I, I like that. It's helped me out. So. Yeah. All right. We're going to go to a commercial break, break, break guys. Um, camera's okay. back on me, but. Okay. Yeah, I can, I can see where. Yeah, I, I, I can, I can, I need to start doing that, dude. Like I, I, that daily devotional. Yeah. It's like I say, and I'll, I'll send you a picture of one. Gotcha. So it's, Again, it's a, it's a paragraph. That's all it is. Mm-hmm. And just kind of telling you that he's the one in control. He's the one that's going to lead us to where we're at. Even if you want to be the problem solver, all about it. But mm-hmm. if you leave it to him, it, he's going to get you through it. Gotcha. Okay. So it's kinda, just kind of like enlightening. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's, it's um, I think the name of the book name is Jesus is Calling. I think that's what it is. Or gotcha. I'll, I'll look it up and I'll, I'll send you one. Gotcha. I, I've started to read the Bible. Um, and I, I always call Renee for like, Little. Yeah, no. Say again. Okay, go. Go back. Yeah, we we we've always been back. So yeah, I've I've been I've been kind of reading the Bible a bit. Yeah. Um, and I always call Renee with questions. I, I think Renee, I think Renee is a lot stronger in faith. Out of all the primos that I know, I don't know if that's yeah. fair to say that, but I I feel I know way. it's fair, not fair to say, but I I I agree. Like yeah. I say, I I admire him because right. not just because he's my brother, but. Right. He's my brother in Christ as well. I mean, he, he helped me out that way as well. Yeah. And I think I think he invited me several years too. And he's like, hey, wait, I'm almost in. I was like, no, no, no. Hard-headed. But, yeah, hard-headed, just oh. dealing with life and everything else. He's worrying uh, about work or anything else. He's the one I, I usually You question. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which is good. I, I, and to tell you the truth, my story is that I've never read the Bible. Wow. I went to a Bible study after this second, and it was like a few weeks, and I started doing it. So I read a portion, like a story of, you know, the the book of John or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so I started reading some of that and I don't, and I want to learn more. Yeah. You yeah. know, there's just different things about well, it as well. Like I'll read something and then I'll bounce it back with Renee. Like, Hey dude, what did you think about this or that? You know, yeah, like, yeah. it's pretty cool to get to that level. It um, is. So I think, I think we've talked about a lot of cool things. Yeah. Um, anything you want to put out or maybe, I don't know. Is there something, you want to talk about while we wrap this thing up or any final thoughts or like, you know, like, I don't know. You got anything like that? Um, Biggest thing is I think just circling back, talking about family Mm. and talking about being united. That goes long ways. Right. I think, um, I think us more as adults now, like Mm. I say, we've, we've lived through some, some hurdles for sure. All of us. Yeah. And it, and it looks like, we admire more of life, but at the same time, you got to make sure that you have that background behind you. Okay. I'm making sense or anything else. Yeah, yeah. So I think like, you know, us getting together as, as primos just kind of hanging out right. and we can shoot the shit, but at the same time we can still be there for each other. Right. You know, the whole deal. That's, I think that's, that's, that's helped me a lot too. Right. So therapy like that goes long ways. Right. So we're having primos weekend coming up. Yeah. Next two weeks, of, two weeks. Yeah. Um, I talked to Juan, Juan Carlos. Okay. And, uh, he brought up a really good point and, and I think we can maybe the channel, we can use it here too. Yeah. To do a family reunion. Yeah. Uh, you know, like a real one. Like, I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. So it's going to be hard to set up, but I think we get some, some of us together. We can, 
we can brainstorm it. Yeah, we can brainstorm it. You know, you know, it doesn't have to be at someone's house. We could, we could rent us like a place or something. You know, there's. I think the last time we options. had that that big of one was when we had the Willa Lela Bash. Mm-hmm. And back when we're we're kids, yeah. oh. when she turned ninety before she passed, which is our great grandma. So, yeah. I think it was I was talking to Alex about it, and I was like, "Where was it? Was it in the valley? Where?" And actually, on the way back from the valley this time, it was in San Manuel. So I saw the little reception hall where we had it at, and it, oh. it just brings back memories. And it's crazy how uh, what kind of memories I come up with. Like right. I, I remember like driving by, and I can remember Tio Cia like parking his truck that he had that gray one, that Choo Choo Custom, whatever. Mm-hmm. That's the truck I remember him getting off. And, you know, probably smoking a cigarette, just hanging out and us going in there. You know, mm-hmm. I just there's little key points that yeah. I, I guess that I keep in my memory. That's pretty, pretty interesting. But, yeah, that was I think a family reunion would be really good. Yeah, we, need, we need to we need to set one up. We, 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 we you know, we'll do the legwork. But I think <clears throat> I think it's time. Yeah. To have something like that. You know, yeah, yeah, for sure. If it's not annual, maybe biannual. Yeah. You know, like something like that. Where yeah. there's no real we're not really celebrating anything else besides us, you know, like for the sure. family. So I, I think we could do that. So that's something that we can kind of talk amongst each other. Yeah. You know, if anybody wants to lead that project, yeah, um, I'm okay with trying to lead it, but I'm not really good at these things. So. Yeah. But you know, we got a lot of family that pe- some people are really organized for sure. Um, and maybe we can we can we can head that way. But yeah, but I think it just cooperation amongst all of us. And like I say, if because there is there is a lot of us, mm-hmm. which yeah. is like. Which we're blessed. We're blessed yeah. to have big families. So yeah. That was for sure. Um, did you go to my wedding or no? You're you're actually. I think I was gone again. You were gone whenever <laughs> I got been married. Gone for yeah, I know you've been gone for everything, but <laughs> I don't think yeah. I don't you probably watched a video at the house or yeah, something. I but know. but I have we you know I as in we have a big family and Nancy had a big family. Mm. And fuck, dude, it was like uh, shitload of people are at a wedding. No. I was like I was expecting less. No llega chingo gente we más y más. But that's that's what's beautiful about it. Yeah. And um, but yeah, I think. I think we can set it up, dude. I think yeah. it, I think it would be amazing, honestly. Yeah, I think it would be too. Yeah. Um, so with that, we're gonna go ahead and close this open road podcast oh, today. Um, can we keep going on forever. We're probably gonna talk after this, but yeah, we are. I know, you know, the you know we can't keep on three hour fucking. Po- I'm not Joe Rogan. Yeah. So not yet. Not yet, baby. Yeah. Open Jose, road. Jose Rogan. One, two, three. <laughs> Mike check. One, two, three. Three, three, zero. Oh. <laughs> yes. So yeah. So uh, we appreciate everybody watching. Um, Hey, man, appreciate you having me. Like I say, yeah, man. I didn't think, like, I was thinking about it on the way up here, just kind of commercial, commercial break again. Here we go. All right, our cameras are, yeah, we're going to wrap this thing up, I That's guess, fine. but no, uh, finish your point, man. I, I, so I think the biggest thing on that is we're driving up here, I was thinking about it. What am I going to talk about? Like I say, I, I think I we kind of discussed a little bit of stuff here, there within the last few days, but. I didn't think I was going to open up as much as I did. So yeah. thanks, man. No, appreciate I appreciate it. it, man. I think it's. Hopefully I did okay. Hopefully, no, I did. hopefully you have me back. If not, the, if not, I'm going to fucking. The like, thing with this, man, it's like there's no rules. There's no right or wrong way. Yeah. Like we got cameras fucking up. We got. Yeah. It doesn't. Like, it doesn't stop anything. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, like I, I feel like that's just it could bother us. But, it, you know, like I think we're past all that. Like. Little bullshit that kind of like, oh God, like that. Saying, yeah. Like, no, nah, it's like, I right, camera fucked up. Let's fix it. You know, I, you I, cherish the good things right. itself and, and little materialistic stuff like yeah. that is not the end of the Just world. Just move on, man. Oh, like, yeah. And uh, I appreciate you opening up the way you did. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, I know it's not easy. If, because I know there's people that watch this thing, right? Yeah. And, a lot. Um, would you recommend someone to come on this fucking thing or what? Oh, <laughs> like it's not hard, I, you know. Actually, it's not as hard. Yeah. Um, I think it was easier. I was expecting it to be harder because I probably thought in like in the back of my head, thinking like, hey, what am I gonna say or what am I not gonna say? Should I say something? I probably said one thing here that I wasn't supposed to, but it's fucking it's open. That's right. what I love about it. Yeah, it's open road. And, it, and it's, it's open it's road, exactly. Shit, so so I think <laughs> I think it's good. Yeah. And I do I do I feel that I do want to tell anybody that wants to come to this podcast yeah. to do it, dude. It, it's actually, yeah. it's good therapy. Yeah. We're going to, we're going to, yeah, yeah. There's, for sure. there's, I found another therapy. So yeah. again, you know, just chilling, relaxing is therapy to me. Hunting, being alone, like in a deer blind is like fucking full therapy to me mm-hmm. now. Besides the alcohol and the drinking right. and having a good time or whatnot, but just being focused in a blind for five, five hours by yourself yeah. opens that where you can talk yeah. to yourself yeah, and everything solitude's else. Good, man. It's, it's good. Yeah. So, Again, I guess, you know, we'll get better cameras hopefully here soon. Yeah. You know, any donations you guys want to give to Open Road? Yeah. You know, I'm kidding. 
Hashtag. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> hashtag donations. You hashtag know? donations. Hook it up. But uh, I appreciate you coming on, dude. Thanks, uh, I think it's awesome. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back soon, bro. I look forward to it. Hopefully we can do a podcast with a couple of us later on. Yeah, Not yeah, now. Yeah. But I'll be, it'll be cool. Once, because I get, I think, once I get better cameras and shit. Yeah, once you get better cameras and shit. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, yeah. thank you for watching Open Road, and we will catch you on the next episode. Thanks. Appreciate it. All right, have a good Thanks one. Bye. Bye.